Thanks for having me. Um, this first poem is called uh, Bally Seedy Wood. And uh, Bally Seedy is the site of a massacre during the Irish Civil War, wherein several IRA members were were blown up by Free State troops. Um, the epigraph is from uh, Stiff Little Fingers, Each Dollar a Bullet. Each old lie a bullet, each victim someone's son. And Irishmen kill Irishmen as surely as if they fired the gun. More tourist friendly now, aspiring even to tranquil anonymity, a nature trail serenaded by the Lee's foaming whoosh. But a memorial cross says different, time enough to pray, a final woodbine half smoked, blaze of a rifle snuffed in the dark. Bones hammered and paved far out of place, his good ear lent to silence, broken only by lorry brakes snarling out in the boreine before sliding back into Trelly's void. They're coming from the barracks yard to this camouflage of leaves, green as the free state garbadine. Goodbye, lads, and God bless, he murmurs to the others, out of breath and nervy as they're chained to a felled log. Slivers of flesh or bone fly as the blast mangles the air like a stomach lining, turning stones loose, tossing warm limbs in the air, tangling them among leaf, loam and damp branch for crows to land and nibble. Not enough time to scream, even. As for him, he falls much clearer, landing in a ditch across the way. He'll make his escape from here, but not yet. The heavy gun rattle singes with no ballads to magnify it. He was able for it all, but not for the limbs littering the hillside like logs, bark bled of rain, camouflage garbadine, lack of birdsong in the grove. Thanks, Bob. Um, just, uh, when I was going to go down to Skibbereen, there was going to be a uh, First time I was going to go down to Skibbery and I was going to meet a friend of mine who since died. Uh, Paul Curran was his name. And Paul was, a, Paul was a good friend of mine and a great poet from Dublin. And um, the last time I spoke to him before he died, it was a casual conversation. He just came into where he worked and we were talking and said we were going to catch up and have a chat and maybe have a pint because it turned out he lived in Skibbery. And um, that same week I found out he killed himself found out via social media. It was a very sudden thing. And uh, so when I was going to go down to Skibbereen for the speakeasy sessions, this was one of the poems I was hoping to read. It's in, in his honour. It's called Tattoos. In memory of Paul Curran. I saw you three times the week you killed yourself. But I spoke to you only the once. First time you came into where I work. We had a brief catch-up, chatting about where we were since we last spoke. Our girlfriends, the burdens of language, what gigs we both had lined up. None for me, and a fair few for you. Second time was in passing, and I didn't call out or catch your eye in time. Third time, smoking in the dame tavern doorway with your mates, and again, I said nothing, just kept on walking. Each time, there wasn't a bother on you. As proud Northsider, an unsure Southsider, we cheerfully slag each other off, our liffy edge polarities swirling in laughter. So you'd say, Northbound or South, man, what's it really fucking matter? I can't say I knew you that well, Paul. But I did know you were sound. A skin decent enough to absorb indelible ink. No faded tattoos on show. At EP, over campfire embers, you planted your docks in the grass and your rebel bearing flared as you recited poems of Kulak. Concrete site of your youth. Agent Backroads. McGregor and Lamar. John Keats and Joy Division. Mates lost the gunshots. 
and the art that never gets made. No one knew you were more fluent in the grammar of eulogy than any of us. So who knew it would settle on you, the abrupt beckoning of death? There isn't a lot to apologise for now, Paul. I've only your sound cloud left on repeat now, and your voice's pulse, keeping me on the ball. Okay. Um quite dark over here so I'll try and do something try to find something a bit more um, a bit less a bit less dark um, this one here is called a uh, hush and I lived in the states for a few months back in 2017 I was kind of I lived in Boston for a while with my girlfriend and um, it was a it was a strange period in my life I was very very happy but very very new at the same time and uh, this poem came out of this called Hush. And if we lived in the States, I'd use a police scanner to help myself sleep. A crackly feed of carjackings, drive-bys and robberies long in progress would rasp over the airwaves from an LAPD radio straight into my earphones here in the New Hampshire guest room. Endowed with a flair for saving myself, I carry ex ex sorry, endowed with a flair for saving myself. I carry exculpation, dreaming the hotly white blooms of gunfire are aimed at me. Lumps of soft nosed iron poised to puncture my flesh, seeding to sleep only when I know the perps aren't headed our way. Instead, we share a bed that confers no sleep and dusts our dreams with older dread. A blue-black moon blanching your eye as you clench my hand to yours while I sigh darkly, chew on an alarm's nestling in the tangled brain. I get up at 12.07, careful not to let cold seep under the sheets, try sleeping on the couch, wrapped in a heavy blanket, the image of your eyes' almond glimmer keeping me calm till daybreak when you leave my room your bra hooked, and pull me back in under the covers for hush, for lazier love. Um, go. We are talking earlier on about the, uh, about the sea, and I am writing an awful lot about the sea, and um, I was, I was over in a, I heard about there was a death recently off the coast of Wexford, of a skipper of a fishing boat, and I saw all the boats getting together, and they were they all blared their horns as a final tribute to him. This one's inspired by that. It's called Skipper. Just off the headland, a threnody of fog horns. Sonar scanned his corpse, anchored to the seafloor. The search was called off at dusk, crawling swells fit to burst, and too many prayers went adrift with the spray as a late westerly purred his name. All else held fast. Lighthouse glare, trawlers and lifeboats in his wake, a brotherly swarm, and his skipper's eye, trimmed for freak waves, as the divers sounded each fathom. Um, thing is we're, thing is we can't be here in person, and we're doing this all in isolation. I wrote this poem around the start of when the lockdown was first put into effect. This is a Villanelle, and it's called a self-quarantine. Unable to ignore the noise of my neighbours, spraying their hands with disinfectant and castile, the world carries on behind closed doors. Taking it day by day with slow depletion of stores, I get all my news online, my weekly shop as well, unable to ignore the news of my neighbours who stand far apart for the sake of each other's health. Fine by me, I don't much like people. The world carries on behind closed doors. I make the most of my self-imposed shelters, 
like a phoenix brushing off the last ash speckle, unable to ignore the noise of my neighbours. Even with season three streamed, virtual tours of the Met and Guggenheim earmarked for appraisal. The world carries on behind closed doors. Today the sun bubbles white, its molten glamour is lost on me, who catches dust like a pearl, as the world carries on behind closed doors, unable to ignore the noise of my neighbours. Um, we'll do uh, two more, if I'm able, and then um, I'll hand it back to Paul. Um, let's see what ones I got here. Um, since it's Easter week, um, I wrote this one in a uh, read somewhere that a lot of former um, Irish Defence Force members are are living homeless. Usually, when they finish service, um, apparently they've been living in residential homes provided by uh, state organisations for the last twelve years. About seven hundred of them in number. So this one's called uh, Easter Week. Then, he grabs his rifle, levels us, tries to ignore the screams. Put your seat in a cadaverine, sting his nose as tracer fire scorches the sky. A flock of bullets in slick flight. Today's ashes are being shipped home to Ireland, shrapnel and limbs. Heli rotors whisking Congolese wind to gale force. Sand drift salting his throat, leftover musk of battle. Now, bare knuckled in April, out in his earth and limping down the keys, he vomits shell casings over a stone wall, grains of flint lodged in a septuagenarian eye. Rain pounds like tarmac, like rubble, the liffies back on night patrol, husks of acid pooling in splotches of green. White, orange. Lying huddled as he once lay huddled at a Lebanese gully stricken by roadside bombs in the glare of a shop window display. The sleeping bag he takes cover in is a winding sheet. His mind a blueprint blotched with the bidding of nations. Blood blends warmly with rain. He lurks across the way from the veterans hostel in Smithfield, unable to bring himself to walk in. This is what he's come home to instead. Larry him soaking his bloodstream, the moon's searchlight glimmer, his bones clinking taut layers of flesh as he refights his nightly battle with the cold, slashing through the cardboard mattress he salvaged from a wheelie bin. He'd shiver a jab from the finger of death to jolt him awake. A man of disappearances, named after Emmett or Wolf Tone, or whoever was Taoiseach the year he was born. He now walks like he's being watched, like he's on holy ground, scorched, cold black by grenade blasts, and not vast enough to harbour the dead. Let him and all else find their outpost, and see that it lasts. Okay, Paul, how's that? 